Hi, welcome back to the Network Plus certification video series. I'm Mike Redmond, Master Trainer, here to help guide you through your successful journey of becoming a Network Plus certified technician. We're going to walk through a wide variety of topics, starting with basic network concepts all the way through network management and security. In this segment, we're going to take a look at network monitoring. I'll explain how SNMP works, describe some network monitoring tools, and walk you through a scenario that uses management and monitoring tools. When it comes to network monitoring, the heart of it all is SNMP. The simple network management protocol is the primary management protocol of TCP IP. And at the heart of that is what's identified as the management information bases or the MIBs. These categorize all the data for query. The SNMP system itself is composed of the SNMP manager itself, the managed devices or agents, and the managed information bases. They function by what's called the PDUs or protocol data units. They handle requests like the get request that is sent by the manager needing query of its assets. The response request, requested information sent by the agent. And the set request, the agent has now modified the data and then sends these called variables. And then the SNMP traps. These are the agent solicited information from the management system. So an example of how SNMP works, for instance, with a printer, the management system will send a query to the print agent. That agent will provide answer back to the management system and the trap is the print agent's resultant poll that the management system needs if the printer needs attention. Also included are SNMP alerts called walks. It's a utility that can also be used to get information by an automated source. Alerts can be set to sent to your phone, for instance, via SMS text messages or email. There are multiple versions of SNMP, starting with SNMP version 1, which really isn't used much anymore because it's lack of inherent security. Next would be SNMP version 2, better than SNMP version 1. However, there has been several weaknesses identified. The modern standard is SNMP version 3. This fully supports encryption as well as robust authentication and supports large numbers of network devices. And as you've learned, everything within the TCP IP protocol is dependent on ports. There are versions of SNMP that will allow you to use the unsecured communication ports as UDP, such as port 161 and 162. You'll set your SNMP manager to listen on 162 and the agents then listen on port 161. However, it's preferred to use the secure communication ports. These will use TLS for communication on ports 10,162 and 10,161. They're the same with the management service and the agents. Next, when discussing monitoring tools, you have packet sniffers. They query network interfaces and capture packets into a capture file. To do this, you must set your NIC in promiscuous mode. This will enable you to continually capture data packets across the entire LAN. One of the most popular packet sniffers is a free tool called Wireshark. The next subject we need to talk about is what's identified as packet flow. You might hear it called NetFlow data. This tracks traffic flowing between devices. The flow cache contains the history of all the captured flows. It includes the destination and source addresses as well as the destination and source ports. The amount of NetFlow data available can be overwhelming for most networks. 
it's recommended to employ what's called a NetFlow collector. This collects the flows from your multiple network devices. Here's an example of one such collector called Live Action. So to capture NetFlow data, it requires interface monitors. The basic components to set this up is to know the speed and duplex of the interface, the utilization, or at least proposed utilization, uh, which would be the bandwidth used by that interface. It will also identify any drop packets or errors that have happened across the interface, how many discarded frames that it has run into, these are rated per second, and how many times, if, the interface has been reset. Next, we have performance monitors. These track overall system performance, and as well as detecting anomalies to alert the admins. The most common monitors would be the Windows Performance Monitor and the Linux Syslog. So all of this data has to go somewhere, and we put those in what's called logs. They contain the performance and activity information, and you'll have your choice as to where to focus, whether broad-based logging or more focused logging. Understand that depending on the software that you choose, you'll see these log entries identified as different things. Within the Windows Performance Monitor, they're called counters. Within the Linux 6 log, they're called facilities. So why are these logs important? Well, they're important for us to be able to track the baseline. The baseline is nothing more than what is the normal working parameter of that system or the infrastructure. We use the baseline to determine activity patterns and detect anomalies. So understand, with all this collective data, it's important to maintain good log management. That's proper security and maintenance for each of these logs. The security aspect is because these logs contain somewhat sensitive data about your infrastructure. The maintenance comes in because we need to be aware and understand whatever the organization's retention and rotation policies are. Now, these aren't the only two tools that are available to you. There are a variety of third-party tools available. Uh, one such tool is called Caddy. It's a graphical program that will show you the utilization, workload, and performance metrics of your network, and will help you identify problem areas such as bottlenecks. Many modern networks have moved towards what is called SIM devices, or security information and event management devices. These provide log centralization for ease of use, as well as real-time monitoring for security events. This also makes aggregating these logs a lot easier because many of them will analyze the log files for specific security incidents or anomalies and automatically notify the administrators. Well, there you have it. Pretty simple, right? I know, it can be a lot of information coming at you all at once, but don't worry, I'm here to guide you every step of the way. You can do this. Just remember, study hard, lots of practice questions, and you will succeed. You will become a Network Plus certified technician. I'll see you next time.